Okay, so this is about geometric series. Okay, so the geometric series uh, is really a sum of the terms in a geometric sequence. And to remind you about what a geometric series sequence term looks like, the nth term in a geometric sequence is simply a r to the n minus 1. Notice the exponent is always 1 less than the subscript on the term, which I've said repeatedly in my past videos. Okay, well, let's say we want a sum of the first n terms in the sequence to make a series. Well, we start with the first term, right? And we add the second term. That's multiplying the first term by the common ratio. Then we multiply this second term by the common ratio again to make AR squared. And then we make AR cubed. You get the idea. So this becomes AR, well it's not AR to the N because the last term, if we're going only N terms and the first term doesn't have an R that leads you to believe that n minus 1 is your last term, uh, or n minus 1 is the exponent on your last term uh, for this one. So this is your sum. What if you have, say, 200 terms or so? Um, maybe not that many, but simply more than you're willing to calculate. I mean, if it comes up to 200 terms, you can imagine that being horribly tedious to work with. So you don't want to have so much tedium so how do we cut down on the amount of work that this summation implies? Well, part of the technique is to come up with a general formula just like we've been doing for the general formula for the sequence. The sum of the, gen the, sum of the geometric series also has a general formula. So if we go r of s, r times sn, multiplying both sides of the equal sign by r, Let's see what happens. That means each of these terms now have to be multiplied again by r. Well, a times r becomes a r. For convenience, we're going to put that there. a times r is a r, and I'll line it up underneath the term that's a r in the first equation. Then we go to the second term, a r times r, a r squared. Okay, we'll line it up there. a r squared times r, is a r cubed. You get the idea, okay? And then a r to the n minus 2 times r is a r to the n minus 1. Then we go come to this last term, which is a r to the n minus 1 times r, meaning we're adding 1 to this exponent, which just makes it nothing more than a r to the n. So here we are, and notice that we've that multiplying by r generated very nearly the same sequence with one exception actually two exceptions the absence of an a term and the presence of ar to the n which didn't occur in the previous equation so now we are going to subtract and we're going to subtract in this direction you can imagine r times s to the n or r times sn to be a bigger number than SN, so we're going to subtract the bottom minus the top. So we're going to go R S N minus S N, and we're going to put an equal sign. So 0 minus A is negative A. A R minus A R is 0. A R squared minus A R squared is 0. All of these terms just subtract out. They go to 0. Even this subtracts out. Everything up to here, all of this subtracts out and cancels out. And we're left with nothing more than a, well, a r to the n minus zero, which is just a r to the n. So, uh, just for neatness, I will just move this over here. So, now, knowing this, we can now um, subtract common, common uh, factors, not subtract, divide out, so Sn divides out because it's common on this side. And this is Sn times R subtract 1, R minus 1. Here A is common. 
So A subtracts out, make this a little neater. Shouldn't have cramped my A like that. And you get negative one plus R to the N. Really, to make, to put this in a better way, we can say A multiplied by R to the N minus one. Okay, so now we got this and we got this. Finally, we come to the way to have the short form formula S sub N. We now divide both sides by R minus one on this side and on this side. So then we have A times R to the N subtract one divided by R minus one. And this is our new formula for the geometric series, for the sum of a geometric series. And notice you don't have to know you don't have to know any specific terms for this formula. You just have to know the first term, you have to know the common ratio, and you have to know the number of terms. Well, this illustration shows that the geometric series works out to a piecewise function. And a piecewise function means that r could be in one of two states. For example, if r does not equal 1, then you can use the formula that we just derived. However, r equals 1 is a special case. You notice that the formula doesn't work anymore if r is actually equal to 1. Uh, in fact, you'll get a division by 0. So what happens in that case? Well, just appeal to your common sense. If you have r equal to 1, then what happens is that you have a r, which is a times 1, and then a times r squared, well, a times 1 squared is still a times 1, which is still a. And no matter how much, how big an exponent you raise r to, if r is equal to 1, then r to any exponent will always be 1. And so all the way down to the last term, you're just, you're just adding a plus a plus a plus a n times. So that's why in the case of r equals 1, you have n times a. All right, so um, let's put the geometric series to an example. Um, what if we had this series and we wanted to figure out what the sum is? It's not exactly clear how many terms there are here, but we do know A, we do know T1, or A, um, and but do we know R? Well, we know that this must be T2, which is equal to A times R. So if we divide T2 by T1, that's like multiply or sorry dividing AR divided by A, right? So T1 is A, T2 is AR, and here we are dividing T1 into T2 to find out what the ratio is. And this really comes out nicely. The A's cancel, and we just get R. Well, what is R? It's 9 over 27. 9 over 27, which is the same as 1 third. Okay, so R, so therefore R equals one one third and a is equal to 27 so <clears throat> so what we have here now we we don't know what n is we don't know how many how many terms we go for here um, but it's fairly likely that if we look at the last term uh, Tn, we have no idea what n is, but it's 1 over 243. The term is, the nth term is 1 over 243. And this, remember, is equal to a to the r to the power of n minus 1. This is really 1 over 243, which is equal to 27, because a is 27, multiplied by 1 third to the power of n minus 1. Continuing now to find the nth term. Uh, 27, we said earlier, was 3 times 3 times 3, right? 3 to the power 3. 
27. If we multiply 27 by 3, we get 81. Okay, so that's 3 to the power 4. So we get the same answer. If we multiply 3 to the power 4 times 3, we get 3 to the power 5. 243, that's what the bottom says here. So this is really three, 1 over 3 to the 5th. So we could say 1 over 3 to the 5th, or better still, say 1 over, uh, not 1 over, to put it as a base 3 number, it'll be 3 to the power of minus 5. Okay? So then over here, 27, as we said earlier, was 3 cubed. This 1 third is really 3 to the minus 1. This 3 to the minus 1, since it's still a third, we didn't, we didn't affect the value of what's in the bracket. This exponent, therefore, stays the same. And notice what ends up happening is that the n minus 1 will be multiplied by the minus 1 here because of the arrangement of the exponents on both sides of the bracket. So now we can divide both sides by 3 cubed. So 3 to the minus 5 divided by 3 cubed is equal to 3 to the, let's multiply these now, negative n plus 1. Okay. This becomes 3 to the minus 8 because negative 5 minus 3 is minus 8. And you have 3 to the negative n plus 1. Well, okay. So we're saying because the bases are the same, it's the exponents that have to be equal. Um, negative 8 is equal to negative n plus 1. If we solve for n, we bring the 1 over meaning we subtract one from both sides, we get negative n equals negative 9, so n is 9. The other, the other numbers, just to remind you, were 1 third for r and 27 for a. So we have r equals 3 to the minus 1, and we have a equal to 27. So these are, these are the numbers we have to work with for our sum formula. And that's this one. So we know A now, we know R, and we know N. We know everything there is required to be able to come up with the sum. Let's now take S of N. S of N is now going to be A, A is 27, times R to the N minus 1. So this is 3 to the minus 1 to the 9. That's R to the N minus 1 all divided by r minus 1. So 3 to the negative 1 minus 1. This is like 1 third minus 1. It's probably easier to think about if you work that out. So 27 time, uh, times 3 to the minus 9 take away 1 over... This is going to be what? It's going to be negative two-thirds. This is like one-third minus three-thirds. So one minus three is going to be negative two. We're going to have negative two-thirds on, on there. It's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So then we have 27 times three to the minus nine minus one, whatever that is. And we flip this over and multiply. So this is going to be negative, two uh, negative three halves. Okay negative three halves. So we could work that out on a calculator. Um, be nice if this was an exact answer, but that three to the minus nine is going to mess things up in terms of a, an exact answer. So we'll go 27 times three to the power of negative nine minus one in brackets multiplied by in brackets negative three over two. Okay, and we get 40, approximately 40. The 7 rounds the 9 to a 0 and carries the 1. So 40.50 would be the approximate sum to one decimal place.